Okay, today we're going to teach you basic image analysis techniques. Uh, these are very simple techniques that you can utilize to determine if a photograph may be strange or not. Um, two primary things you want to look for. You want to look for information in the EXIF file and you also want to see if the photograph has been faked. So the very first thing we're going to talk about actually is EXIF files or EXIF. This is a file that's contained with inside of a digital image that will give you all kinds of information. Things such as the make and model of the camera. It will also tell you exposure, the f-stop, the whole nine yards. There are several freeware programs out there that are available, but the most useful one I found is actually an add-on for Firefox. So if you're using Firefox as your browser, uh, you can go into Google and Google up Firefox add-ons, and that will bring you to this page. And what you want to do is you just want to search for EXIF, and we'll hit it in there and there it is it pops up number one install this onto your computer and it makes this way easier because that way if you're an email and they send you a picture you can do it right on the spot I'll show you an example of what I'm talking about this is a photograph taken inside the Buford house that they're saying is paranormal I guess because of uh, this green streak also there's this light here they're saying is an uh, imprint of somebody's hand you right click on the image and select view EXIF data and that brings up the program. And you can see right here the exposure time on this is two seconds. That means this thing should have been on a tripod to begin with. More than likely what it is, you can tell obviously because this is the green record light on this camera or recorder and that's the, you know, apparently it was over here and they moved it across. This is just light bouncing off uh, either from a camera, it could have been an image from a flashlight, no telling. It's a crappy picture, it's not a ghost. I'll give you another one here. This is another one that's being claimed to be paranormal. Oh, you can see a ghost face. Ooh, spooky. Let's see what if it's bad photography or not. We'll pull it up. The exit. If I right-clicked on it, selected EXIF information. There's your answer. Two-second exposure. Way too long to be held by hand. This is a crappy photograph. She's probably holding a candle, and there's a candle burning here and naturally it's illuminating your face and as the camera is being slightly moved while you're holding it for that two seconds it creates the blur. So yet another crap picture. Now I wanted to show you this one. I mean this is very obviously uh, another long exposure. There was someone standing here and they moved. But there's something I always tell everybody and that's never alter your photographs at all. Because if you do it enough this pops up. Unable to extract some or all EXIF data. Meaning you've lost everything there's no proof. You can't prove a picture if there's no EXIF information. So that's one of the reasons why we tell you guys never brighten it, don't go in there and do red eye adjustment or anything. Leave it alone. This is another one. I'm saying this is a high charged energy rod or something taken in inside the tombstone uh, birdcage theater tombstone. Once again, just bang, click on it we can scroll down here, I don't even have to make that big. Two second exposure. A lot of times this is not intentional. People just don't know what the hell they're doing. They go in and their camera, they're so automatic these days that it detects the darkness, it activates a uh, night exposure mode, it's going to jack with the exposure. They don't realize it because, you know, they probably didn't read the manual or don't understand, you know, how the camera operates, that it does that automatically. This is another one, another high energy charge light rod. Anytime you see trails like this it's always going to be an exposure problem but um, you know that's just the way it goes and once again here you'll see this is a one second exposure once again way too long this needs to be around 1 20th um, or higher so 1 20th of a second or well let's see if I got that right yeah the longer the time the more likely it is I believe it's 120th is, is kind of like the cutoff. So, um, you know, you get like 1 uh, 32nd, that's not bad. You shouldn't have to use a tripod for that. You go under 120, you're going to have a problem. So, that's the first thing we want you to look at for. And this is easy, you just look at the EXIF information. Some of the other information that's also in here, just to show you, because this has all kinds of really cool information at your fingertips. Make and model of the camera. It's a Panasonic DMC. 
and there's the model number. It tells you the picture orientation when it was modified. It's taken in 2007, August 29th at 1757 and 13 seconds military time. Um, whether the flash fired or not, it was a red eye reduction mode was utilized, meaning the flash is flashing twice actually. Um, auto focus mode, which is probably why it locked onto one second. Um, shutter speed, I mean everything is in here. Um, this has also been modified, and which is obvious because you see the original date and time is zeroed out. This is another way to indicate a fake, by the way. This time and this time should be the same. Your original date and your last modified time should be the same. And when they modified it is when they put this uh, writing in here. So it actually shows that in the EXIF information. There's another little thing we can use. And what you want to do is you want to Google JPEG Snoop. This is a cool program which will let you check for fakes. And it's right here, Impulse Adventure JPEG File Decoding Utility. It tells you how it works. We also have an article on our web page. This is how you can tell if a photograph has been manipulated. It works off a quantization table and it compares um, it's the database that's inside of it with cameras. Um, each quantization table is unique for each kind of camera. What this table does is it tells the CCD how to assign the colors in its memory. Uh, also, programs like Photoshop, GIMP, um, PaintShop Pro, they all have their own quantization tables. And when you edit and save it in one of those programs, it saves it with its table. And that's how this thing basically works. I got some photos here. Oh, for example, take a look at this one. This one's pretty cool. Ooh, it's Gettysburg, and there's a ghost. Spooky. Daytime ghost, even. Well, we can actually figure out with JPEG Snoop if that's real or not. What I'll do is I'll open the photograph, and all this information comes up. And when, Here it's extracting the information. And what you want to do is you want to go all the way down to the bottom, and it's going to tell you right there. Adobe Photoshop. And he tells you right here, Photoshop IRB detected assessment class one images processed and edited. This was faked. Pretty cool. Let me give you another one. Here's another one. This is popular on the internet. Ooh, a ghost. Now it doesn't take an expert to see this is a very crappy Photoshop job, but somebody might buy it out there. You know? So it is actually possible to uh Look at that as well. I want to get out of this. Activate my JPEG Snoop again here. So we'll open that one up and we'll see what it looks like. Let's see, there it is. Okay, information comes in. We go down. Da 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 da. And once again, Photoshop ISB detected. So once again, this was done in Photoshop. Isn't it just wonderful how many of these pictures you can get away with? Now there's something I wanted to show you about these kind of photographs as well. This is one of ours taken with a modified camera. And I want to show you how these modified cameras will show up. So if I want to open this one up, I want to show you. This is why I do not call any of our photographs evidence, by the way. Because when you scroll down, it says appears to be a new signature for a known camera. It tells you class 4, uncertain if processed or original. While EXF fields indicate original, no compression signatures in the current database match this make and model. We've modified it, so it's picking up more infrared light. It's recognizing that it's probably original, but the signature doesn't match what it is for the camera because it's been modified. And that, unfortunately, like the EXIF uh, file, it does kind of ruin it. It's not going to be 100% evidence. So that's why I call these data and I don't use the term evidence. But those are two tools that you can get. JPEG Snoop and uh, the EXIF Viewer for Firefox on an add-on. And with that, you can rule out about 99% of your ghost photographs out there. So, and that's it. But we could still pull some information off that. For example, what we're doing on this photograph is they notice this, there's this red spot. 
and then it thought, okay, that's an anomaly because we got it several pictures and another picture we don't have it. So we're trying to see is this anything tangible. So when we pull up, the first thing we want to do is we'll pull up a thermal image and we'll notice, see, it's not really so much there. It's, it's not bright enough. So another thing that we can do is we can look at the spectrum. And the spectrum is just showing you what kind of light it is. You can see the light coming off that doesn't differ much from his outline. You can see how it's bringing certain things forward and certain things to the rear. And you can see how it took, this is his shadow, and it pushed it to the background. We've also isolated the background, so we've kind of really brought him out. We're still not seeing much of a difference there. Whatever this image is, this is actually on him. So I'm going to say, based on what I'm looking at, that's an IR light source that's shining on his shirt. More than likely a focusing device of some sort.